Good afternoon. My name is Lori Houston, and I'm the Assistant Director of the Center City Development Office. And I have a cool job with the City of San Antonio, and I get to redevelop along the San Antonio Riverbanks and redevelop our downtown. And as Cheryl mentioned earlier, we have a lot going on in downtown. And our mayor declared this the decade of downtown. We're trying to get 7,500 housing units before 2020. We have a major bond program that just got passed and it's like $84 million in projects for the downtown area. And we continue to grow the population. So I'm very excited to be in the position I am today. And one of my biggest passions is the San Antonio River Improvements Project. This project is a $358.3 million investment made by the city, Bear County, the San Antonio River Authority, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the San Antonio River Foundation, and the San Antonio River Oversight Committee. Just a little background on the San Antonio River Walk. Um, our main river walk, which is the two and then a river channel that serves as a flood control channel, is about 3.2 miles. And then we have um, the extension that's going on, and it's going four miles north and eight miles south. Um, we didn't think about doing this project until about 1998, because as Cheryl alluded to, downtown San Antonio <coughs> seems to be the place for the tourists. And we're trying to fix that, but when you're talking about the river walk, that is where you see all the tourists. And we did not see a lot of residents go into the river walk. And so the city, county, and the river authority got together and they initiated the San Antonio River Improvements Project. And it is an investment being made totally for the residents of San Antonio. We have 1.3 million residents in our community, and I'm amazed to hear sometimes from people that they've never been to a river walk. They think it's too crowded, too many tourists, they don't like to come, and some are even proud that they've never been to the river walk. And so now we're fixing that problem. And we're going north four miles and south eight miles. We have 25 million visitors coming to San Antonio annually, and the river walk is the number two tourist destination in the state of Texas. And it's um, right next to the Alamo, which is the number one tourist destination in the state of Texas. The project has four distinct reaches. We have the northern section, which is called the Museum Reach, and that is four miles, but it has two segments. The urban segment, which is a 1.3 mile segment, and we're at the terminus of the northern point of that segment. It's called the Museum Reach Urban Segment. It starts at Lexington, where the Old River Walk ends, and then it goes away all the way to Pearl, where it, and it terminates. And then there's another two and a half mile segment called the Park Reach that will take you from Pearl all the way to Bracken Ridge Park. But that will not be navigable by barge. It's going to be primarily a series of hike and bike trails, and you'll be able to walk to it and have more of a uh, passive experience as you're walking through the San Antonio River Walk. The next segment is what we call the Downtown Reach. And that was um, done in 2002, and it's actually a restoration project of the actual historic river walk. Um, the river walk was built in the 1930s and 40s as part of a WH WPA project. So as you can imagine, it requires a lot of maintenance. So in 2002, we did some maintenance to the historic river walk. And then you have an Eagle End segment, which is a small segment that serves as a transition between the historic river walk and the Mission Reach, and then the Mission Reach. The Mission Reach is currently under construction and it has eight miles going south and it connects four to five San Antonio missions, the fifth one being the Alamo. The project has several partners. We have the San Antonio River Authority, Bear County, the Army Corps of Engineers, the San Antonio River Oversight Committee, and the San Antonio River Foundation. The city, the county, and the Army Corps of Engineers are the primary funders of this project. The San Antonio River Authority is the actual project manager for the project, and they handle all the coordination and the contracting for this um, investment. And then the San Antonio River Foundation is the private arm of the river project, and they do the fundraising. And then the San Antonio River Oversight Committee is a 22-member oversight committee that was created in 98 to write oversight of the project. I'd like to say that there are two chairs of that oversight committee, and they have been the same two chairs since 1998. And that has been such an amazing commitment on their part, but that type of consistency and having that type of knowledge has been key to this project's success. The project budget, um, the total project cost is $358.3 million. 
the city contributed 74 point, I'm sorry, 72.1 million, and the county contributed 245.7 million. And as you can see on the graph up there, the city was the primary funder for the museum breach. And this was a primarily an economic development project. And then the county is the primary funder for the mission breach, which is more of a recreational ecosystem restoration project. And so the city took the lead on the actual funding and coordination in partnership with River Authority on this segment, and the county is doing that on the southern segment. The project benefits include ecosystem restoration, primarily for emission reach, flood damage reduction, quality of life, cultural connections, and economic development. But today's presentation, I'm really going to focus on just some of the amenities that you're going to see before you get up, what you get on. I think you're going to get on in the next 20 or 30 minutes. And I just want to highlight some of these amenities. Um, as you guys mentioned earlier, the Museum Ridge Urban segment is a 1.3 mile segment um, extending from Lexington Avenue, which is kind of near the El Tropicana Hotel, and it's right where the old historic Riverwalk ends. And then it extends all the way to Pearl, which we're right here. 1.3 miles. Um, it stabilized the river channel. It included a, a lock and dam system, which I'll show you pictures of later on, which is the only lock system in the state of Texas and allows barges to travel north and south along this reach of the river. And it was um, a great cultural experience for our residents. There are eight works of art along this extension of the San Antonio River. Um, the San Antonio River Foundation was our private arm for this project. They raised about $10 million to work with eight um, artists to do these types of artwork that you'll see on the bar drive. I'm just going to go through some pictures, some before and after pictures, so you can kind of see uh, what the project was like before and what it looked like after. Actually, can you slide through these? We had, I'm working off a Mac, and apparently it's not compatible with this, so we're using an old presentation, so I apologize. This is a picture of the Lexington Avenue Bridge, and as you can see, this is what the project looked like before. Um, this is kind of like the, this, the old river walk uh, at the, where it turned in on the north side. And that bridge is going to be, was the location of one of the major artworks we did on the project. And what we did is we, um, the River Foundation, they issued an RFP um, internationally and asked artists to apply for projects. They gave them a stipend of about $50,000 and asked them to submit proposals for these pieces of art. They came in and they identified eight artists to work underneath each of these bridges. And uh, we have them from all over the world. Um, one locally and then we have two that are internationally, both from Europe. Um, the first piece of artwork was done underneath the Lexington Bridge and it was done by Martin Richmond. And he basically used slivers of little um, plexiglass and tied thousands of them underneath the bridge. And so when night falls, there's lighting that kind of shows the shimmering effect on the San Antonio River. Can go to the next slide. And that's what it looks like in the evening. Um, we have so many bridges along the San Antonio River, and if you're in the historic river walk, you'll notice that every bridge is designed differently. Robert Hubman is the architect of the historic river walk, and he paid very close attention to those type of designs. So if you're, when you're walking along the historic river walk tonight, which is the main loop, which is where you see all the businesses, you'll notice every, um, every 10 feet, there's a different pattern in the river, and every 100 feet, the actual texture in the sidewalk changes. There is not, um, every bridge is designed differently, and so it's a very unique experience, and nothing is duplicated. And we try to make sure that we did the same thing when we went north and south along the river. So as you're walking along the river walk, going north, you'll see that every 100 feet, the pavement texture changes, and every bridge is different. Go to the next slide. This is another piece of artwork where there's different mesh panels, and those panels are supposed to represent the different types of colors that you're going to see along the natural river walk. It's a little bit simpler. And you'll notice something that's interesting um, for municipalities is we had to make sure that these types of artworks were able to be maintained. So a lot of this we can power wash from boats, um, and then everything that is a little bit more delicate, um, we were able to create a, um, a fund that helps with the maintenance and the replacement, they're all insured because 
when you take on an operations and maintenance of such a great investment, you need to make sure that you have those types of work to ensure. <laughs> so some of them are a little bit more hardy than others. Go to the next slide. This is what, um, kind of like the width of the San Antonio River, what it was before we approved it. And this is the area of the lock and dam looking north. Go to the next slide. And this is the actual lock and dam today. That's that same picture, but now improved. This is a lock system. Like I mentioned, it's the first lock system in the state of Texas. It takes about five to nine minutes, depending on the actual load in the barge, um, to be um, go up or go down. It rises you or lowers you nine feet. And uh, when you're on the barge, you'll see a red light or green light. Green means the barge captain has the right to enter one of the chambers. There are two chambers. And depending on what direction you're going, north or south, it'll lower you or we're raising you so you can travel to the other historic river walk or actually go backwards. Go to the next slide. Um, this is another piece of artwork. Um, this gentleman's um, his name is Mark Schlesinger, and he actually got um, a patent or paint that goes in the dark. And so this paint is powered by solar panels underneath the bridge, and in the evening those strips glow in the dark and they do a reflection on and that's a picture of it during the day. You can see those panels. They're powered um, during the day by the sun. The next. This is a picture of Bank Street facing south. With a picture pre-improvement. Um, you can go to the next slide. This is that same area today. And something I'd like to mention, if you are in the historic river walk today, you'll notice that um, it's not very wheelchair accessible. It's very crowded, and we made sure that when we did this improvement, we wanted to make sure you could run, you could have a, a, a baby stroller, you could be um, in a wheelchair, so it's completely rollable and completely accessible on the east side. Um, the sidewalks are 10 feet on the east side and five and six feet on the west side. This is a picture of a, a historic rock dam that was discovered during the project. As I mentioned earlier, this was a major partnership between the city, county, and the Army Corps of Engineers. But it was a huge effort when we discovered this rock dam that was not on the d firm maps 12 months into construction. And we had a 24-month period to complete this project. We identified the rock dam. It was um, discovered to be built in 1871, and it was to power the flour mill on the adjacent property. We immediately called the Texas Historic Commission. They came out and it was installed, but for a day, they said as long as you honor this rock dam and you do some interpretive signage and light it, will light and continue construction. You can go to the next slide. So that's the that's the picture of it today. Um, it's a little bit more um, drastic in the evening because they have track lighting on the bottom. So when you're on a barge um, going over it, you can see the, the rock dam lit underneath. This picture is a picture of our only um, piece of sound art along the river. And you'll notice that when you go on the barge, it kind of sounds like you're in a zoo. But uh, the artist, Bill Fontana, who's from England, um, took the recordings of places along the San Antonio River. So as you go underneath the bridge, you're going to hear wildlife, you're going to hear children um, laughing, you're going to hear bikes, you're going to hear feet pounding from running. So it's recordings that you're going to hear all along the 15 miles of the San Antonio River. And this is the artist's first actual permanent installation um, along the, actually in the world. This next picture is my favorite picture. This is um, Roy Smith Bridge, um, Roy Smith facing south. And go to the next slide. And that's that same location. Um, the San Antonio Museum of Art has been on the stretch of river since 1981. That building you see in the background was the former Lone Star Brewery. And um, it quit operating in the 70s. And the Museum of Art purchased that property um, as the museum. Well, they never really opened it up to the back of the river because basically it was, it was a drainage ditch and it was mosquito ridden. And so now we made sure that we really honored the presence of that Museum of Art. And you can see that bridge right there, which we call Roy Smith Bridge. And there's a steel truss bridge um, that connects those, the, the bridge. And there's a picture. In the, I'm sorry, in the museum you'll see a little walkway, a skywalk. That um, bridge used to connect those two towers in the brewery. 
and we were able to use that actual connection as part of the pieces of art in this project. This next um, piece of art is the most famous piece of art, I think, along the San Antonio River, and you'll see um, quite a few photographs of it. And it's called Fish by Donald Lipsky, and it's 25 fish that are underneath the Interstate 35 bridge. You can go to the next slide. And they're, they're lit within with an LED light, and uh, they come on around 8 or 9 p.m. in the evening, and they're seven feet in diameter. And there's another fish which is on display at the San Antonio Museum of Art. But this is a great example of how we turn like a, an ugly gray underpass into a work of art. And one of the things that we didn't plan on is there is a colony of bats living underneath that bridge. So now at 8 o'clock when the lights turn on, the bats fly out to the tea. And so it's become a great destination for families in the summer to kind of sit on the back banks of the bridge to, to watch those bats fly out. It's another picture of Camden facing north, what the river looked like before. And then you go to the next slide. Um, this is a picture of a grotto that the San Antonio River Foundation funded. And there's water that runs through it. Go to the next slide. And that, that is the artist's name is Carlos Cortez. He is the one um, local artist that we had working on this project. Um, he and his family do something called, um, it's, faux, um, it's, it's faux wood, but it's made out of cement. And um, they've been doing this for years, and a lot of the, um, his family's work is done at our San Antonio Zoo in a the park, and they've carried that on. Go to the next slide. And that's what the picture looks like complete. And when you're on the barge, you'll be able to see that. But something <coughs> interesting about this project is that the artist, Carlos, made sure that he somewhere put the pictures of the workers who actually worked on the project. Their, their faces are kind of molded into the grotto. And so you're supposed to see about 20 different types of faces hidden in the actual work of art. We'll go to the next slide. This is another picture. This is looking north. You go to the next slide. And that's where you are today. Um, this is a Mara Probury. That's the termination of the Museum Reach Urban segment. And um, I'd like to mention some about the coral. I mentioned partnerships were like a major thing with this project, both public and private. The folks at the Pearl Brewery understood that and they donated $3 million to this project, of which 2.4 was used to fund the improvements that are adjacent to their project. Even though that's something that the public would normally take on, they wanted to make sure they contributed and paid for those types of improvements. And then they contributed another $600,000 to the River Foundation. Another thing the Pearl and the city have worked on is there is a stage in, in this turning term, basin and the city of San Antonio made sure we funded that stage, and then the folks at the Pearl Brewery, they went ahead and they built an amphitheater on their property. So the city gets to use the amphitheater so many times a year, and Pearl gets to use the stage so many times a year. So it's been an amazing public-private partnership, and we couldn't have done it without folks like the Pearl Brewery and at t who also contributed $5 million to the project. Um, this was all done for the San Antonio River Foundation. Go to the next slide. I'm just going to briefly talk about uh, the Mission Reach. Um, the Mission Reach project goes eight miles south. Um, phase one and two have opened, and that was about two and a half miles. Phase three, which is the remaining five and a half miles, is under construction, and um, it will be open completely at the end of 2013. This is mainly a recreational ecosystem recreation project. Um, you can um, hike, you can bike. And hopefully in the next year you'll be able to rent a canoe or kayak and get in the San Antonio River. We've never allowed water contact in the San Antonio River, but now through this project we're able to institute some um, water improvement um, best management practices to make sure that it was a healthy body of water where people could enjoy water contact. Um, this is also um, something exciting that just recently happened on Friday. The Secretary of Interior, Ken Salazar, announced that he was nominating the missions, the five missions, four of which are all on this reach, to be the location of a World Heritage Site. Um, there are three nominations going forward from the United States, and we are one of three. And so this is an amazing opportunity for San Antonio. Um, we become a World Heritage Site that also um, allows us to benefit from more tourism and more international dollars for these improvements. So we're keeping our fingers crossed 
for this river project has been a major jewel for our, our community. It is a natural waterway, primarily natural waterway, that continues to, to benefit our community. Um, along the Museum Reach alone, we've had um, several um, economic development projects. As Cheryl alluded to earlier, $256 million of investment has occurred since this project opened in 2009. <laughs> That's about 1,500 housing units that are primarily in this area. As you leave, um, as you exit this building, you'll see quite a few um, cranes in the air. There are two housing projects on the Prolery site that are under construction, and another three in the surrounding area. And the one that just opened um, this past fall, it's 99% leased. And um, the ones at Pearl are already pre-leased. And so there is a demand for housing in this area. So we're very excited to see how that's going to benefit our downtown for years to come. Um, I understand, uh, just, I know I'm speaking to business owners and the community. Um, when I um, do a barge tour, I get asked, what are some advice you have for communities? Or what are some best, you know, um, best practices or lessons learned from this project? I'd like to say, uh, this project is very unique in where instead of having the engineer be the lead, we had the architect be the lead on this project, and the heavy civil was the sub. And um, I feel that that was a great idea when you're doing this project. We want to make sure that we kept the artistic and the cultural values in this project. Um, another thing that I'd like to recommend is having a, a private partner like the San Antonio River Foundation. Um, they were able to raise $10 million for this project. And people really aren't willing to give a municipality money for a capital project, but when you have a nonprofit that's been created for that purpose, um, it was a great opportunity for us, and they were able to raise that 10 million within two years of this project being constructed. They're looking at raising another 20 million for the mission reach, and they're halfway with their goal. So that concludes my presentation. I don't know if there's time for questions. I know you're getting on the barge. You're gonna hear a lot of this um, information from the barge tour, tour guide, but uh, I'm happy to stay after a little bit.